Thank you, thank you. Uh, so welcome everyone. Um, you know, today I'm gonna really talk to you about the future of mobile computing and really what excites me about this time and space for our industry. Because I'll tell you, um, the one reason why Zebra and myself support this forum so much is because of the transformations that are coming out of mobile computing. But before I get to that, I do have a trivia question that is not in your phone that I'll ask. Um, and the guys who went to dinner with me last night can't answer this question. But, um, you know, knowing that I'm only me and Microsoft are kind of between you and beer, I thought this would be an appropriate question. So what country in the world drinks more beer per capita than any other country in the world? Yeah, who said that? Come on up, whoever said that, come on up. You're gonna get a prize. What's that? Oh, you're, you're an employee, you can't. Okay, so, 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 so let me change the question here. How many liters of beer per capita does a Czech citizen consume? By the way, for the English people in here, it's 38 gallons. It's 143 liters. Isn't that unbelievable? <laughs> so, Mark, you can give this away to someone else later. What's that? You said 150? Okay, come on up here. You can. Uh... <laughs> Hi. Congrats. All right, so, um, so that's the most important kind of trivia. You will remember that when you leave here. If you forget every, everything else, you'll remember that. Okay. So uh, from a mobile computing perspective, so I lead the mobile computing business globally. I've been around the business for the last seven years. And frankly, th there's a lot to be excited about right now. I mean, if you look at mobile computing prior to 2014, it was a real speeds and feeds kind of activity. You were kind of replacing one device with the next chipset with more memory. The operating system hasn't fundamentally changed since 2008, right? Think about that in our industry. Windows Mobile and CE was the dominating operating system, and it hasn't changed since 2008. And frankly, the kernel, the structure, the whole way the operating system worked goes back to 2000, right? So there is a lot of change, but it's not just about the operating system. It's about what you can do with that. And that's what I'm really excited about, and I'm gonna walk you through that today. You know, at Zebra, when Zebra acquired the enterprise business of Motorola, it was more than just, you know, printer company combines with scanning company, combines with mobile computing company. It was really about this vision about enterprise asset intelligence, and how do you look at the three mega trends that are converging in our market, and what will that mean for our industry and for the enterprise customer? the Internet of Things, cloud computing, and mobility. And what I'm excited about is the fact that mobility is at the cornerstone of that convergence. And at Zebra, we call this enterprise asset intelligence, call it AIDC 2.0, call it whatever you want, but it's really how these things come together to transform our business, our enterprise customers, right? And so when you look at it, we're at the inflection of this convergence of these core technologies, and it's hard to argue that, not, that uh, any one of those isn't being com becoming pervasive right now. But then you combine it with the number one uh, portfolio in the world, whether you talk about scanning, whether you talk about printing, whether you talk about mobility, whether you talk about RFID, whether you talk about active tracking, we have a full portfolio, modern portfolio of these technologies designed to go after enterprise asset intelligence. So as a partner ecosystem, it's well positioned here to grow. From my perspective, you know, innovation and being the first in an industry isn't 
something new to mobile computing. We have many firsts over the last 20 plus years in the industry. So leveraging these assets and really guiding it to the next generation, the next wave of enterprise asset intelligence um, is what we're focused on in mobile computing and what's really exciting. And in fact, if you talk to any one of my staff, our strategy is built on four pillars. The first pillar is the one that you should be taking notice of. We set out, and this strategy, this pillar of strategy hasn't changed in the last four years. We've been driving towards how do we become the number one enterprise mobile application platform for our channel ecosystem leveraging the core technology transitions that are happening in our market today. And that's really about the ISV community. I mean, because when you think about it, when you go from, let's say, uh, you know, an MC9090 to a 9190 to a 92, the only thing that's changing is the chipset, the memory, maybe a couple screen sizes or something in between. But at the end of the day, from the app ecosystem, it's still the same core app. Same dot at net app that you're just porting across. That's, that's not transforming our marketplace, right? So when you look at the transitions that are happening today, they're transformational. And what, what excites me is this ecosystem, the people in this room today, are the ones that are going to benefit from it. This is the opportunity for the ISV ecosystem and the app community to really transform leveraging these technology transitions. So I'll go into them in a little more detail. Um, this is a good quote to think about, but if the external is changing faster than the internal, the end is near. And certainly when I, when I think about that quote, you think about the enterprise community today, where 60 plus percent is sitting on Windows Mobile CE. When you look at the smartphone ecosystem, it's, how, how much Windows Mobile CE? It's less than 1%, right? The world is transforming around our enterprise customers faster than our ecosystem is. So it's incumbent upon us to drive change. And that's what this forum's about, is really instilling and inspiring our partners to drive change within our customers. You know, uh, James presented this slide. He talked about how Enterprises going digital is transforming every market vertical we have today. Whether you talk about online retail sales, whether you talk about delivery and TML, digital transformation is driving our enterprises today. So if you don't believe in change, you can look at this. Look at the growth of Amazon over the last decade, right? Um, the, the, the digital transformation is happening all around us. When you look at it from a technology perspective and think about mobile computing or my portfolio, because these are the things that keep me up uh, at night, operating system. You know, I talk about how long it's been sitting in the market without changing. Well, 68% growth year on year in Android, right? Android is transforming, right? Last year, 80% of our field mobility products shipped on Android, 80%. And keep in mind, I'm the market leader. I got 42% share globally. 82% um, 80 of our field mobile, mobile platform uh, uh, shipped on Android. That's a significant amount of products, right? So the world is changing. You know, Avante talking about how the operating system end of life is coming. Um, it is coming, right? So, so that is definitely causing change. Security, IoT and connected device is elevating the need for security within our enterprises. As things become smarter and talk to one another, as people <clears throat> wanna have cloud connected capabilities within their operations to transform it, security is gonna be prevalent. And let's face it, the vulnerabilities around it, security are growing. You see it on the news all the time. Hacking events, even the presidential election, we see it on the news. Uh, machine vision and sensors, when you look at it, 
uh, the number of connected devices growing by the year 2020, it's supposed to be over 7 billion devices. Today, 2016, it was 2.4 billion. The number of connected devices is growing at an exponential rate right now within the enterprise uh, alone. Um, beyond the hands, if you're not seeing automation happening all around you, wake up. It is happening all around us. It's automation, whether I'm crossing the border and I'm now using retina scanners or some kind of biometric to get in. It's automation uh, inside our customer warehouses using machines and robots. I love this quote. Uh, Henry Ford, when he went out to look at you know, building, transforming transportation, he went out and asked people what they wanted. People came back and said, I just want faster horses. No, you gotta reinvent, you gotta transform the business. And this is what customers are looking to do. 45% of the customers are saying that they will be implementing smarter machines in their operation faster than they'll be putting people in their operation. So, you know, you wanna talk about change happening? It is happening. Um, you know, so the way I think about it is in terms of a framework, you know, the threat and the opportunity. If you look at my graph here, customers and markets on the, on the left side, down at the bottom, products and innovation, right? The existing core market, for me, that's the mobile computing market. I own 42% globally. Um, we've had a great leadership position. We're 2x any other vendor in the market today. But that's changing. The market is changing considerably. Then I look at how do I transform these customer experiences? If you're talking about retail sector, you're talking about TNL, everybody's looking to transform and connect with those customer retail experiences. I look at how do I expand my business and change? I look at how do I look at new markets, new segments to go after, and market creation, new form factors and products. And then I overlay that with four things. One is operating system. Much has been said today about operating system. I'm gonna to talk to you in a minute in detail about that strategy around operating system and what we're doing. Security, I mentioned the threat of security. What it means for our customers who are going through this transformation and becoming connected in the things that they do in their enterprise. I'll talk to you in detail about security. Uh, machine vision and sensors, an area we're investing in. I think James highlighted a couple slides. I'll talk to you a little bit more about that and where we're going with that. And then beyond the hand around mobile automation, you know, how do we automate things and machine vision around that? And what do we do? So let me walk through that starting with the operating system. It's probably the most talked about uh, thing today, but reality is, it's not about the operating system that gets me excited. It's about what you guys are gonna do with the new operating systems and the capabilities that they deliver that's pretty exciting. So if you look at the market today, just to baseline ourselves, um, today, uh, greater than 65% of the market is shipping on the Windows Mobile CE product that I talked about that's been the identical product since 2008. Mark, were you born then? No, okay, I'm just kidding. Um, primarily, by the way, where, where it sits today, when I look at the things that, uh, that are done, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, when I look at the market today, the warehouse is where, where uh, most of the Windows Mobile and CE are going into today in the market space. But, you know, if it's not just because Microsoft's not supporting it after 2021, uh, time frame, the fundamental, the fundamental shift we have is the SOC vendors, the chipset vendors, they're not building new chipsets supporting Windows Mobile CE. You'd be surprised how many events I go to and that's a surprise to people, right? So there's a limited life on the chipsets themselves. You can't, there's not a new OMAP chipset supporting Windows Mobile and CE. <laughs> Right, so th th this is a hard timeline. Now people can sweat their assets longer and they can sit on them longer, but the reality is there is pretty finite timeline there for support. We're seeing a lot of 
even like the software vendors around the ecosystem stop the support, you know, Citrix and others who are just saying, you know, we're winding that down and stopping it. So, so it's important to note that that's on a decline. That's a shrinking market. We've seen Windows Mobile drop off more dramatically than we have uh, Windows CE. Um, but CE also has a life out to 2021. In terms of Android, um, so it's greater than 30%. I think 34% is what Avani had. I think that's correct. Um, for us, it's this year we'll, we'll ship over 50% of our portfolio on Android. Um, certainly we've seen great growth. Um, you know, uh, for those who track earnings, you saw mobile computing grew at double digits uh, in Q1. All that growth was driven around Android. You know, the fact is the legacy is declining. The only thing growing right now is the new operating system. And when you think about the, the advantages of that operating system, in the consumer world, it's 86% share of the handheld smartphone market today. So why wouldn't that happen, right? Um, when you think about Windows 10 IoT, um, you know, we've invested in it, TC75, or TC70 we launched. But the reality is it hasn't taken off. The ecosystem isn't there. The community of developers, the op open source support, it's not there. So today it's less than 1% share. Um, so, um, you know, from a growth perspective, we don't see it growing. We see, we've seen it recently decline slightly. Um, but that's Windows 10 IoT. And I'm talking about the mobile. I want to be very specific here because we are investing in the big Windows platform, which uh, I'll highlight in a minute here. Um, but there is limited SOC choices. So, for example, I can go to multiple vendors on Android to build wearable products like Freescale and others that have chipsets that I can build and I can get base code supported from those chipset vendors. I can't do that today on Windows 10 IoT, so it's very limited. And then on big windows, which I was talking about, which certainly in the tablet market and the desktop market has huge share position. And I think, I think big windows running on Intel inside our enterprise customers is a real safe bet. I tell, I tell my customers this all the time. Um, certainly Qualcomm is coming. Most of you read the tech rags and, and you look out there and you know, 2018, somewhere around the end of it, I think they're going to move big windows onto Qualcomm. That's what the rumors are out there. So, uh, so we look forward to that. We'll see how that, that uh, roadmap unfolds. But you can see, this is the reality of the market we live in today. This isn't Jill White talking. This is market data, right, uh, of the reality that we live in today. So what is my strategy to this? Well, we've talked about it before. Um, fundamentally, we're going to protect the investments of our channel partners in the ecosystem and our customers. And on the legacy Microsoft operating system, we will hold those products and we will build those. Things like the 9200, 3200, we will build those and stretch those out as long as we possibly can. Right? That, that is our strategy. We'll do everything we can to support them as long as the components and the chipsets are available. I've heard my competition say, oh, look at Zebra, they're getting out of that. That's not true. We're going to support our customers as long as we can on the form factors, the key based form factors that we have today. I, I feel fairly confident we can get through 2020 without uh, any major changes on that. In terms of Android, this is where we've invested heavily. If you look at our product portfolio, We've refreshed the entire portfolio. We have form factors at every tier. By the end of this year, every tier of the portfolio and every vertical we serve across handheld devices, tablets, and VCs will have Android options in them today, right? So we will have the most we have today, but we will uh, expand that and be the biggest, strongest Android portfolio in the market. We'll continue to strengthen our partnership with Google to drive enterprise use cases where we see fit. Um, we're going to drive the uh, Android enterprise features 
uh, in, into the operating system and lean in and drive GMS with Google in the process. And I'll talk about that in more detail in a coming slide. Last but not least, where there are gaps and there are things that you need as an ecosystem, uh, mobility DNA, we're gonna advance that, continue to grow that. You know, we've transformed our business around uh, this change. We're leading with software in our product development model. Every quarter, I'm releasing feature functionality upgrades to mobility DNA. So this was more than just a OS change for us. This was me flipping the development model upside down. We run agile teams. And the real win for you guys as a partner ecosystem is when you start feeding requirements into me and I can put them on my backlog and start delivering to you within a quarter. That's the real win. We're, we're, we're co-developing in a continuous development environment together with our customers. And then the last pillar is I'll continue to invest around Windows in tablets. You know, I have a full portfolio of tablets already on Android. I will continue to invest around the big Windows architecture um, and anticipate that convergence that I mentioned in 2018, okay? Um, certainly, my strategic partners, you know, this is something we, we invested quite heavily in um, uh, many months ago. Uh, the reality is in the new world order that I just talked about, um, being tied to the Qualcomm life cycle and understanding the life cycles of the chipset, knowing when to get into it, when to invest in it, and the timing of that is critical. And it's something we've worked very closely as the market leader, shipping over one and a half million devices a year to, to align ourselves with Qualcomm and make sure that when I get into a platform, you have the longest possible life on that platform. We've also worked to abstract ourselves out of the platform with mobility DNA. Um, so clearly Google's here, we're collaborating around the enterprise Android features. Uh, we're looking at where areas that we can uh, standardize, which I'll talk about in a moment. Uh, continuing to work with Microsoft, continuing to evaluate their roadmap and support their products long-term. So, um, so fundamentally delivering you a, fa fa you know, a sound strategy for developing your apps. Um, so I mentioned that to me, the OS transition is so much more than just an OS transition. To me, it's really about, you know, what are the benefits we're going to deliver? What are the capabilities we can now do? How can we uh, transform, reimagine the workflows of our customers? And, you know, for me, a couple of the points I'll talk about security. You know, when we started moving to Android in 2012, the number one thing we had feedback from customers was, we need better security. Um, you know, we, we launched in 2012 the ET1 tablet. Okay, it was gingerbread. It might have been a little bit premature for the enterprise, but we learned a lot. We jumped in feet first, and we developed out the, mo that was the start of the mobility DNA framework. That's, the, that's what we invested in to make it enterprise ready. We've continued to do that. Lifeguard, we re re recently announced Lifeguard. If you don't know about LifeGuard, you should get to know it. Every month, I'm releasing security updates. Since the announcement of LifeGuard, which was in April, I've released 725 security patches. For those of you who know TC70X and 75X that are developing on it today, 282 security patches since April, right? This is the commitment we've made to our ecosystem is to make sure security is the number one priority, right? And we're releasing those patches on a monthly and quarterly basis depending on the life cycle and where it's at. But this is a big deal. We've, we've worked with Google as well. Google has, has made a good effort around securing their platform as well. You're gonna hear from Chuck Bolin in one of the sessions talking about security and some of the work that they're doing. But rest assured, um, when Jack was up there, you saw the number, I don't think he called it out explicitly, but 400 million devices a day being scanned for security and vulnerabilities. Like nobody in the world is scanning 
that number of devices. With Android being 83% of the mobile workforce, I mean, they're scanning more security vulnerabilities than anyone else in the world. So it is the most mature. So, um, so anyway, security has been a big pillar. Quality. I mean, we've seen the number of quality issues related to the software and hardware drop by 66% since moving. Remember, this operating system is designed for mobility. It's got a modern memory management system. The applications are sandboxed, so you're not gonna crash the device and lock it up and brick it, right? It's designed to have applications delivered real time and updated to the platform. This is a big difference than what you and I grew up with in this industry in Windows Mobile and CE. So, you know, this is, uh, quality is a big thing. Um, so we've seen, by the way, as the popularity increases and the number of users are developing, remember, fundamentally, it's coming from an open source framework. So everybody's debugging it. Everybody's making it better. We have a huge advantage by following the 83% smartphone, handheld business, and ensuring that we're not transferring quality issues into our customer. So we got a better baseline to work with. Um, so anyway, so quality is a big transformational. The modern application ecosystem, I mean, um, the model view controller framework that it's being developed off of, segmenting the UI from the data set, from the business logic, allows for real-time updating of apps and stability. I run into a lot of customers today who are still in the mindset of set it and forget it. I don't want to ever touch it again. In the world of modern applications, connected IO, IoT devices, having devices in your field that aren't current on security is a huge liability for our customers, right? So they have to get comfortable with updating their devices real-time. Every modern operating system is addressing security through real-time updates. Whether it's Windows, big Windows, whether it's iOS, whether it's Android. Delivering those updates is critical, right? Not to mention the sensor framework, the modern sensor framework that's built into the Android uh, application stack, supporting all the sensors natively that our industry uses now in a smartphone, whether it be camera, Bluetooth, low energy Bluetooth, GPS, GLONASS. I mean, all these sensors are now fundamentally a part of the operating system and the chipset. Um, so think about how that'll expand functionality. Talk about data analytics and visibility into the analytics. Um, every one of our devices has packed full of sensors that you can leverage. Not to mention the, the delivery of the apps. The apps are designed to be delivered and updated throughout, whether it be through a Play Store or a Managed Play Store, which I'll talk about. But it's very simplified compared to what it was in the prior generation of devices. Last but not least, being enterprise ready. Uh, there's a full mature suite of EMMs out there that are supporting the device management around these devices. We have a full tool set in mobility DNA for locking down your device, staging your device, um, um, configuring your device, all, you know, uh, scripting. We have a very mature, the most mature stack in the industry. Um, so, so that's what's pretty exciting beyond that, but let me continue. When it comes to enterprise Android features, you know, uh, this is our little graphic of the evolution of Android kind of maturing here. Um, so growing up, right? Um, but, you know, this is the reality, though, technical realities that I'll share with you. Device manageability has been really difficult. You know, we know that, right? But I can tell you what we're doing about it. We're driving to more common interfaces around the man manageability stack, leveraging the enterprise, uh, Android enterprise features. Uh, otherwise, some people may legacy know it as Android for work or close to that. Um, but we're looking to standardize on those manageability features to make it more repeatable and easy. I 
can't even tell you how many times I talked to Google and our MDM, EMM vendors about this topic. Manageability is still a struggle, but we're making progress. App manageability. You know, there's a lot of ways that you can get apps onto an Android device today. But I'll tell you, we're looking to leverage that managed play ex store experience. So you get not, a, you know, historically we built app gallery for the AOSP versions of Android that we have out there because there was no way to get apps, especially some of the licensed apps that we put out there, Adobe Reader and some of those. We went out and individually licensed those with vendors and put it into app gallery so it created a vehicle to get it out. But now, with the maturity of Android, we got the managed play store, we can leverage that. So your customers can get the benefits of the consumer devices that they want to enable for their users and control what they don't use in that process. So it's truly a managed experience. And then GMS, the maturity of GMS to go from the point of you can't really configure anything, customers saying, oh no, they can see my data, they now know what I'm doing, to the ability to over the air control and manage what's available and what's not available to Google or anyone else who wants to mine data on that device. So GMS has matured quite a bit, it's become a useful tool, and now we want to drive that further into the uh, enterprise. So, how am I addressing the enterprise uh, features of Android? Um, so one is protect customer legacy investments. So, we build out early on, starting in 2012, we build out a suite of MX commands. So features and functionality to secure and lock down the device. Things like, how do I lock down SD cards so you can't do that? Um, things like uh, intrusion detection. How do I do autonomous intrusion detection and, and response? Um, we'll continue to maintain and service these APIs for a long time. We'll drive an orderly transition. Secondly, we're gonna embrace the enterprise Android features, right? We're gonna lean in on GMS. We're gonna, uh, we're gonna work to adopt common interfaces where they exist, you know? And we'll make sure that we make it so that your applications as seamlessly as possible transition with any legacy interfaces. And last but not least, we're gonna to continue to excel, uh, invest you know, in developer tools. You know, if you look at the number of features that I'm carrying from one OS version to the next, it has grown quite a bit. So my ability to get more common feature set allows me to expand others that you and our other customers are asking for. Um, so we'll continue to do that. So talking about security here, this is a, a pet peeve for, my, for me. Um, you know, the fact that this is the biggest risk, especially when, uh, within our retailers, is around security. And it really is manageable. Um, the security problems that they run into often are around setting it and not updating their operating system, right? Not updating it, because vulnerabilities you know, continue. I just told you that since April, we've patched 725 vulnerabilities across our Android portfolio since April, right? The way I see it is for our customers, um, we owe it to them as an ISV community, as a partner community, to educate our customers on they need to update and keep current. The idea of setting it and forgetting it is a thing of the past, right? Um, you know, Establishing pol policies around these real-time OS's update, whether it's quarterly, monthly, biannually, working with them to really establish that. And we, we don't want to be the laggard of them getting it. So we're way ahead of the market with our updates, with LifeGuard and the OS. We're, we're typically dropping a new OS every year on our platforms. Um, we've done pretty good to keep it under kind of a 12-month window. Um, but this is uh, an area where I think our customers are lagging quite a bit. Um, and then device policies. You know, BYOD is a great acronym, saves a lot of people money in their operations. But you bring in a device into your enterprise, you put corporate liable data on there, you are exposing 
uh, your enterprise to that because you cannot control the users of what they're doing on there. So certainly I think you know, corporate owned, business managed and owned devices is the most secure way to do it. Where they're locking down the devices and the users don't have the right to make changes. So from our perspective at Zebra, our response to security is this. Educate our customers on having a mobile security policy. You know, that they need to get into an operational mode and by the way, I think this is a great opportunity for the application community, which quite honestly, you know, in the .NET days, it was kind of stale for a long time. This is a great opportunity for you guys to be trusted advisors of your customer. You know, educate them on the risks of corporate owned devices versus BYOD devices and what benefits they have there. Outside of that, between Zebra and Google, you know, we look to update the Android security. We want to be current. We're working with Google to pull in the fixes as quick as they uh, post them. We'll, we've extended and we've doubled down on LifeGuard. We're the only vendor in the industry that can truly give a customer a 10-year TCO. Nobody else can do that. Nobody. Right? LifeGuard is the only option to give your customer a 10-year TCO. Other than that, ask the customers, what security policy do you have from your OEM, your supplier? I guarantee it's nothing today. Um, and in fact, in the Windows Mobile CE world, it was largely implied. This framework and LifeGuard, if you're not aware of it, has a very detailed framework of how we're supporting security and providing TCO for our customer. And then Zebra's MX features will continue to add value where we see it uh, necessary to add value to support our customers. So that's, that's our response to security. So now we're going from kind of the core. If you remember my first slide where I had OS, security. Now we're getting into the expansion areas. And the real exciting part that I think for our customers exists. Um, and that's really thinking about machine vision and sensors and where this platform can enable new trends of productivity within your customers. Um, you think about it, you know, the last, I'd say the last two decades has been about the blue. You know, going from manual pen and paper tracking of information to now data capture, barcode scanning. So mobility was all about how do I mobilize that barcode scan into the operations, largely centered around inventory operations, a very, uh, very static kind of use case, right, that we've been addressing. What it really excites me today is, you think about the modern Android operating system, you think about the, the sensors that it incorporates into the framework of the operating system and how it's designed. You think about how cloud computing, deep learning, AI, machine vision, are coming together, this is much more than an OS transition. This is an opportunity for our uh, application ecosystem, our partners today, to transform the enterprise businesses in the ways that they haven't seen before. Delivering step function productivity gains where they haven't seen any in a decade. And to me, it's more than just a scan engine on a mobile computer. It's how these come together into a modern application uh, for platform for the enterprise. And that's why this is our number one priority within mobile computing in Zebra today. I think you'll, you'll walk around, you'll see uh, Lindsay's back there in the corner. Um, she'll be showing in some of the breakouts. But, you know, we, we launched a product called Simulscan. If you haven't seen it, like some of these products that we're launching too, is to stimulate you in the application ecosystem and really push the boundaries of what was possible. And to the extent that we can enable these apps and enable you to transform customers and really think out of the box and change how you look at an Android mobile computing device, that's where we're investing in today. Simulscan, the ability to really take barcoding to a new level, grab an image and within a second be able to decode tens and hundreds of barcodes simultaneously at once. 
I think Lindsay will be showing that uh, tomorrow um, in one of the breakout sessions. But this is a capability with the APIs and capability for you to actually integrate into your application framework and take advantage. Things like mobile dimensioning. Um, you'll see an image here of a, of a wound. We're looking at how do we look at machine vision and do healthcare wound assessment of patients. Is that wound growing? Is it healing? What color is it? How has it changed? We're looking at enabling these in our platforms today. Reading a tire, how do you read the, the number on the side of the tire to identify whether there's been a recall? How do you look at physical objects and determine is that apple still ripe? How many days of shelf life are on it? This is where we want to take this. This is where the platform can take us all. Then going one step further, James put up a, a slide talking about kind of that path to fric frictionless workflow. This builds on that. You know, when you think, you know, in a similar format to the previous one, you think about the history. It was all about how do I get the physical to the digital? Put a barcode on an object, now, now make it digital. And that was transformational for our customers. Then it became a wave of how do I mobilize that and get that into more use cases where I can scan more frequently throughout the process? Now we're talking about how do we get to real time? Continuous visibility of operations. When you think about the now economy that James talked about and the fact that customers are wanting to make real time decisions. I was talking with a partner earlier today. The trend in warehousing is not wave picking and how I do wave picking. It's how do I stream picks? How do I real time respond to demand? How do I make deliveries and get the, the guy closest to the product that just came in on an online website? How do I get that picked as fast as possible to the guy who's standing as close to the item as, as uh, to be picked? And this is where machine vision, sensors, deep learning, contextual awareness all start to come together. And it starts with the frictionless path that James pointed out. How do I, how do I take information and go to hands-free? How then do I take hands-free and go to truly mobile, autonomous, no user involved in that equation? That machine lear learning journey is something we're investing in. If you were at NRF at the beginning of uh, the year in, in New York, we announced our uh, smart lens product. It really real time tracks and transforms retail. You know, the, the vision of RFID, and I grew up in there since 2001, uh, the vision of RFID was always I push a button, I can real time see everything in the store. That is reality now, today. That will be transformational in the enterprise. So, when you think about beyond the hand and the transformation we're driving, it's how do you create a better connected? We talked about the enterprise intelligent uh, software business unit and the platform that they're standing up to real time connect all these devices together seamlessly. But how do you get the analytics and the real time information out to the edge in a transformational way? Um, that's what we're driving to in mobile computing. So um, I want to leave you with this because I started out with why is this an exciting time, especially for you. But if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go farther, go together. We need the app community. We need our ISVs. We need our partners to get behind this vision and help us get there. We can't do it by ourselves. And we are committed to our application ecosystem and our partners to do that. And uh, so I look forward to the journey with you. Please enjoy the rest of the event. Um, and I want to see who can keep pace with the check in drinking beer tonight. All right. Thanks.